What's up guys, it's Andrew at Elite Gaming HQ and I want to talk about what monitor is best for your gaming setup. Which one you should buy? Is it worth your money? Will you actually utilize it? There's a couple things we have to go over in this whole video. Also, if you still have questions after the video, feel free to comment below. I will uh, answer them as quickly as I can because I'm here to help. But the reason why I made this video is because a lot of times when we build computers, we get people that ask for a request. They say, hey, I want a computer that's going to be able to do 240 FPS. And then I start to say, okay, well, I don't want to talk you out of the sale or anything, <laughs> but let's see, do you have a monitor for that? Or how do you plan to do this? And usually they want, you know, to play a specific game at that FPS, but they want to use their TV or they want to use a specific monitor they already have, but it only has 60 Hertz. So I have to say, Hey, this is probably not going to work for you, but let me explain why. Let me explain what you have to do. So that's a common issue that I have. Uh, I get this question probably like at least two or three times a month. In this video, I want to talk about Hertz versus FPS. I want to talk about screen tearing and how to avoid it and what it is if you see it. I want to talk about V-Sync versus G-Sync versus FreeSync. Well, they sound similar. And if you're coming from uh, not knowing exactly what to get for your hardware, which a lot of people are, then a quick explanation will probably help you out and determining the difference of what monitor you should buy. I mean, some monitors exclusively have FreeSync, some exclusively have G-Sync. Lastly, I want to cover a little bit about bottlenecks because it does determine what graphics card versus monitor you're going to get. Uh, because, you know, if you don't have the right CPU or if you have like, you know, the strongest CPU, but a certain graphics card, you're not going to be able to get those FPS. So I figure we cover on that a little bit. So we're going to move into the actual video. Before that, let's talk about the sponsor, which is us. And why we should be your first stop for your next gaming PC. Okay, when it comes to buying a new gaming PC, be sure to check out EliteGamingHQ.net and actually the channel trailer for this very channel is reasons why you should buy it. So go check out Aaron and her explanations of why you should buy Elite Gaming HQ PC. You can just email us and we'll make a custom listing based off of your needs, your FPS goals, the games you want to play, video editing, anything. So be sure to check it out. Now first, let's talk about Hertz versus FPS. And what is the difference? So basically, the simple fact that, that you need to know is your Hertz are going to dictate the FPS that you can actually see on the monitor. Now I know a lot of people get a 60 Hertz monitor and maybe they pump their game up and they're running 120 FPS. And they're like, oh, I'm running more FPS than you. But actually, you're not. See, the thing is, no matter what the little counter at the top says, you're not actually seeing that amount of FPS. The monitor can only display the FPS to match its Hertz. Now some monitors have over overclocking and all that stuff it starts to get convoluted but in any case if you have a 60 hertz monitor you're only seeing 60 fps if you have 120 fps on the top screen you're still only seeing 60 fps and i like to argue to a lot of people that is not the best to do you definitely don't want to be running your computer complete fps and the reason i feel that that's a disadvantage is because that's like sitting in your car leaving it in a certain gear or in neutral and just revving the gas as hard as you can you can see how it's going to put extra heat extra strain on your computer yes these parts are meant to do that but you're definitely running them to full capacity for example at 120 fps your computer has to find its first bottleneck its bottleneck could be the video card it could be the cpu it could be the ram whatever it may be but one of those things is running at its full potential and if you were to match 60 fps versus 60 hertz you may see that your video card is only running at 50 percent utilization and your cpu is only running at 30 percent utilization and you can just see right there how much stress you're not putting on the system by running at the fps that matches the hertz so once again hertz limit how much fps you can actually get so think about that when you're looking into monitors so let's go in a little bit deeper and let's look at how much of a difference you get from 15 30 90 120 fps i have a couple models here to show you and in this image here you can see the difference and how much blur now of course having higher fps can actually give you a tactical advantage and the reason being is because you're actually seeing more images in front of your eyes at once if somebody is to run out of a corner for example if you only have for argument's sake 15 fps it's like a flip book you're only seeing his images as they stutter across the screen now if you had 144 fps you get to see as soon as his foot crosses that corner versus his head versus his body versus everything rather than all of a sudden his whole body is there so of course it's going to give you a competitive advantage but if we speed this up a little bit you can actually really see how it would look as a moving target coming at you super quick and this is going to generally help when you're playing games 
like Overwatch, Fortnite, stuff like that. If you're a kind of casual player and you like to play more RPGs, 60 FPS is perfectly fine. In fact, 60 FPS used to be the mecca of gaming for PC gaming and a lot of people why they wanted a PC over consoles because consoles traditionally for the longest time would only display 30 FPS. And a lot of people didn't know that and the reason why it didn't bother them is because of how far away you sit from your TV. When you sit right up on a monitor, 30 FPS is really noticeable. It's blurry and it just doesn't look as good. Now I will have to say my own anecdotal opinion, I feel like about 100 to 90 FPS looks great for me on my 3440 by 1440p ultra wide. And that seems very achievable with ultra settings using a 2080 super. So this leads into screen tearing. What is it? Why do you get it? Where does it come from? Well, screen tearing generally happens when your monitor can only display 60 FPS, let's say, a certain FPS, and then you overload it. Because what happens is the monitor is so confused, it's trying to lock in its frames and put them out there all at once, but it's getting so much information that it ends up doubling. And then you get these nasty lines across your screen. It's pretty easy to fix, but it's definitely jarring. I personally notice it right away. I hate it. I can't stand screen tearing. But that's screen tearing and I'll give you a couple examples here just so you can see. Now one easy way to get rid of screen tearing is you could turn on vertical sync or v-sync. As you see in a couple games, it's in Overwatch, it's in a bunch of different games. You can also lock the FPS at a certain number which will essentially do the same thing. And what v-sync does is v-sync has your monitor tell your graphics card, hey you're only allowed to do this many FPS and if you try to do more then I'm gonna balls it up and we're gonna have issues. Issues. That's what VSync does. And for a lot of people that have less expensive displays, VSync's not too much of a bad option. But that leads into adaptive syncing, which is G Sync and FreeSync. They work a little bit different, but for argument's sake, let's just say they're kind of the same. Whereas G Sync and FreeSync, it is your video card that tells your monitor which frames it can have. And since the video card is running the show, you shouldn't get screen tearing and you should actually have a more fluent experience. So it's kind of like VSync, but instead the video card's running the show and it links up with the monitor and they coexist together to give you the best visual experience at a certain FPS. And I say a certain FPS because FreeSync could have some issues, whereas it doesn't, it could have a different tolerance than let's say G-Sync and also cost a lot less. So G-Sync is directly from NVIDIA. And the problem with that is they make the company who's building the monitor buy the licensing and buying certain bits of hardware, which will run up the price. Whereas FreeSync says, hey, we're gonna give it out for free, just as the name, to try to sell our video cards better. So that's something to think about. When you look at a $400 AMD video card versus a $400 Nvidia video card, but you want adaptive syncing, you might be better off buying the AMD card because for a budget, you're going to end up saving $200 on your monitor, which is great, which you can get basically the same features. But if you need the best and best of everything, then you're going to want G-Sync with a Nvidia card at this current time, unless you check the tolerances for the monitors because G-Sync is dialed in to a certain plus or minus tolerance that are overall give you the better experience with a lot of the monitors. Me personally, I run G-Sync. I don't see any problems, but my girlfriend runs a 32 inch 144 hertz 1440p FreeSync with her 5700 XT. I also don't see any problems with hers either. I would be happy playing with either monitor and either setup. So once again, I know it sounds a little bit confusing, so you can message me below, tell me your setup, and I'll let you know what I think you should get or recommend a monitor for you. All right, let's talk about bottlenecking and why it'll affect your FPS. And bottlenecking Bottlenecking as a whole, the reason why I feel that this should be talked about in this specific video is because a lot of people think that they can just swap out their video card and all of a sudden they're going to be able to get high FPS. And that is not always the case. A bottleneck is exactly as it sounds. If your CPU is limiting your FPS, then no matter what video card you have, your FPS will still be the same. For example, I could have an i3-9100F, which is a four core Intel processor, and it allows me to get 90 FPS using a GTX 2060, which is great. That's that's a great gameplay experience. On my 144 hertz monitor, that game's great. Everything looks good, beautiful. But I say, hey, I want to get the full 144 hertz. I paid for this monitor. Why don't I? So then you go and buy yourself one of the new graphics cards. You want to get a 3070. You throw a 3070 in there. You spent big money, and then you're disappointed because guess what? You still only have 90 FPS. What gives? Why? I got a better video card. Why is this happening? Well, the reason is is because your CPU was the limiting factor. So keep that in mind.
minds. In some cases, you may not need a better video card, just need a better CPU, and vice versa. A lot of the pre-builds I see from other companies, they'll throw an i7 in there because marketing, people see the i7 and they're like, yeah, that's the one I want, right? So they get a $500 processor in this computer, but meanwhile, they're running a 1660 Ti or something. So what's happening here is you're still not going to hit the high FPS because now your video card is bottlenecking your processor when it comes to FPS. So the best way to do it is you got to find a synergy in your budget between a properly priced CPU and video card. And for more explanations about CPUs and how they work versus threads and everything, I did make a video for that. You guys can check that out. And I go into depth to even talk about the current ones that were out during when I made that video. I'm going to make a newer one and update it, but with threads versus cores and everything else and what you can go from from there. So that's it. I know this is a lot of information to take in, but at least hopefully now, well, at the very least, if somebody asks me the same question again, like, hey, can I run 240 hertz, vice versa, I can say, hey, check out this video, take in the information, and then you'll have a little more informed decision that you can make to get the right FPS. And when we talk about FPS, a lot of people can tell the difference between 30 and 60. A shorter few can tell the difference between 60 and 144. Barely any people can see a difference between 144 and 240. That's when you get to the point of diminishing returns. You could spend 400 more dollars on a monitor to get 244 hertz, but at the end of the day, you won't even notice a difference. My personal opinion is 144 is good enough for 95% of all the people that want a game. It saves you on the hardware side and it saves you on the price of the monitor. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you out. Be sure to check out our other videos. Be sure to check out our channel trailer where Aaron talks about our gaming PCs. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. My name is Andrew. This is Elite Gaming HQ. Thanks guys.